What's good, Melanin Warriors? We're jumping into a captivating journey into the realm of Yoruba mythology to unravel the mysteries surrounding one of its most formidable and revered deities, Shanga Dorisha of Thunder and Lightning. Let's get it, man. Let's go. Shango's roots can be traced back to the Yoruba people of West Africa, particularly Nigeria. In Yoruba cosmology, he is recognized as the god of thunder, lightning, and fire. Shango is a complex and multi faceted deity, embodying both the destruction and regenerative forces of nature. His name is often associated with the sound of thunder, symbolizing his powerful presence in the heavens. Shango's mythology is deeply intertwined with his earthly exploits, portraying him as a charismatic and dynamic figure. Legend has it, y'all, that Shango was once a powerful king in the ancient Oyo Empire, known for his military prowess, wisdom, and passion. His rule was marked by prosperity and justice, earning him the admiration and devotion of his subjects. And just to switch it real quick, not to take nothing away from the Orishas, but it's kind of on the same lift as the Netsuru, where the Netsuru actually lived among the people. They weren't just some mystical figure that was in the cloud. Shango is commonly depicted wielding a double-headed axe known as the Oshe Shango, which represents his authority and ability to cut through obstacles. He is adorned in red and white attire, color symbolizing his connection to fire and purity. The ram, one of Shango's sacred animals, is associated with strength, virility, and sacrifice. Now we're going to talk about something called the Thunderstone, y'all. So the Thunderstone is a meteorite believed to have fallen from the sky and is considered a potent symbol of Shango's divine power. It is believed that Shango harnessed the energy of thunder and lightning to communicate with his worshippers and assert his authority. Shango is renowned for his fiery temperament and passion, representing both the destructive and the transformative aspects of fire. As the Orisha of Justice, Shango is invoked in matters of fairness, retribution, and conflict resolution. Devotees turn to him for guidance in legal disputes, seeking his discerning wisdom to deliver equitable judgments. Despite his fierce nature, Shango is also celebrated for his love of dance, music, and festivities. His sensual and charismatic energy draws people to him, making him a popular and approachable deity among the Yoruba pantheon. So the worship of Shango is widespread across Yoruba dysphoria, including regions in the Americas, where the Yoruba religion has endured through the transatlantic slave trade, which, let me start right there, which was is really, really amazing, because this ancient, um, I ain't gonna say religious, I'm gonna say spiritual belief of the highly melanated people, man, it came all the way over here to the Americas, and even though most slaves had, you know, their their identities, their their actual culture the actual culture of our highly melanated people pretty much beat and ripped from them some people still continue to do it and it's still kind of passed on today in the americas devotees honor shan go through elaborate ceremonies dance rituals and music invoking his presence to seek protection justice and empowerment so one of the most well-known myths surrounding yoruba orisha shango is the story of his relationship with oya and oshun who we've covered before two other prominent deities in the Yoruba pantheon. This myth often refers to as the love triangle, not only highlights Shango's passionate nature, but also explores themes of love, jealousy, and the balance of power. So this myth begins with Shango, the powerful and charismatic king of Oyo Empire, like I mentioned before. Shango, known for his martial prowess and wisdom, ruled with a fair and just hand, earning the admiration of all of his people. So despite his success as a leader, Shango was lonely and longed for a companion to share his life with. In his quest for a suitable partner, Shango became um, enamored or, you know what I'm saying, obsessed, if you will, with two goddesses, Oya, the goddess of wind, storms, and transformation, and Oshun, the goddess of rivers, love, and fertility, who, like I said, we covered earlier. Both goddesses were drawn to Shango's charisma, but the king found it difficult to choose between them due to the distinct qualities. You know what I'm saying? He he saw something he liked in Oya, he saw something he liked in Oshun, and, you know, it was hard for him to choose, you know what I'm saying? So... To resolve this dilemma, Shango decided to marry both Oya and Oshun, 
believing that their unique attributes would complement each other. The three lived harmoniously for a while, but tension began to brew as jealousy and rivalry emerged between Oya and Oshun, which, uh, you know, that's why I'm kind of like, me personally, I'm not really with the two wives thing, just for this, this very thing right here, man. But shout out to everybody who do it, how they do it. Man. I ain't mad at you. Oya, with her fierce and assertive nature, grew resentful of Oshun's sweet and gentle demeanor. The turning point in the myth occurs when Shango offends Oya, causing her to unleash a powerful storm in a fit of rage. The storm was so intense that it threatened to the entire kingdom. In desperation, Shango sought the assistance of the Orisha Wisdom or Rumila, who advised him on how to appease Oya's wrath. And the story goes on from there. If you guys want to look more into it, you know what I'm saying? Help yourself. Put something in the comments, man. Tell me if I'm missing something. Add something to it. But this is another amazing story of an amazing Orisha. Y'all join me next week as I cap off the stories of the Orisha with the father of all Orisha and humanity, Abatala. Peace and blessings, my people. I shake.